I come from a startup called Mesosphere that works with and around Apache <laughs> Mesos. So, hands, how many have heard about Mesos before? Cool. How many have tried Mesos? Great. Um, so, I'm Nicholas, and um, I'm uh, also a committer in the Apache project um, because Mesos is a top tier um, Apache project, which is great. Um, so, um, I can't promise to, uh, to answer all questions that you might have on Mesos, but I, I can definitely point you in the right direction. So let's start with a small agenda, or agenda. Um, one, learn Mesos. Three, profit. Um, this was a uh, reference to, uh, to South Park. I don't know if you've seen the underpants stealing gnomes and their um, profit plan. So, uh, but no, uh, <laughs> hopefully this talk will be mutual beneficial because we are all about having a community around Apache Mesos because it's really a result of that community. And hopefully this will be a gentle and quick introduction to, uh, to what Mesos is. And we end up using the language that you like. Um, I have to say that um, I'm a C++ programmer and the first project that I did was language bindings and messing with Seago um, and enabling that on, on Mesos. So if you see any non-idiomatic um, Go, please shoot me an email or report on, on GitHub. That would be great too. So uh, let's jump right into it. So what is the problem today with um, data center management. Um, it might be that the most common practice um, to run your services and run your apps is to delegate that to VMs. In the sense that either you have your own bare metal machines that you cut in pieces with, with VMs, or you get that um, hosted somewhere. Um, while that might not necessarily be a problem, we think there's definitely an opportunity to do better. Imagine if your browser was like this. Whenever you open up an application, you had to pick what CPU it was running on. And if another application was running on that, it would fail. This is kind of how we see the static partitioning of a data center looking like. You've seen in operating systems um, for decades really neat abstractions like virtu virtual memory or scheduling multiple processes on a single CPU so why shouldn't we be able to do the same thing for a cluster? Not only because it's easier for a programmer not dealing with physical memory banks and that kind of stuff, but also to make global and more efficient decisions about, let's say, page, page replacement policies and that kind of stuff. So if we look at the alternative, which we call dynamic resource sharing, we could have a 16 known cluster cluster here where the majority of the nodes are running Hadoop, some of them are running web services, servers. And when the workload changes, like say throughout the day, and you have more web servers that needs to be dealt with, um, you should be able to oh, scale that automatically. So yeah, recap. If um, you have different kind of services, they have different kind of workloads, and there's no reason that they are not sharing resources. So Mesos is all about um, resource sharing and resource isolation. It's a resource manager. <coughs> because when you think about it, you don't really care about physical boxes or virtual machines. You care about resources and mapping jobs and tasks onto those resources. And that is what Mesos help us, helps us do. Let me just scroll a bit. So, how do we interact with Mesos? Mesos is, could be compared to an operating systems kernel. You rarely interact with it directly. You interact with things that runs on top of it. 
It could be Kronos, which is a framework for Prometheus, which launches batch, job, batch jobs on scheduled times. So it's almost like a cron for your data center. We have Marathon, which takes care of high availability of long living or long running services. So it's almost like an init D for your data center. We have different analytics because this is for the part of the app stack from, um, from Berkeley. So we have Spark, Storm, Hadoop running on Mesos 2. And um, we'll get into the nice business of writing a small framework. So that's where our framework um, fits in and um, why I'm here. Because now you can write, write those frameworks in Go. So let's get into some details. This is a small quote from Douglas Adams that I like. If you try to take a cat apart to see how it works, the first thing you'll have is an unworking cat. <coughs> and uh, I really like about computer science and computer engineering that we can tear really um, complicated pieces of software apart without hurting anybody. <laughs> so this is going from the very nice structured um, figures to some handwritten ones. So when you, where you saw methods as a layer before, it's actually a hierarchy. So you have multiple frameworks that communicate with the master. To not have any single point of failure, you have standby masters that have been coordinated coordinated the zookeeper. And all slaves, all compute nodes in your cluster then communicates and, uh, and uh, agrees on launching um, and resources with the master. Uh, and just to introduce the two last ter terms, um, on a single slave, an executor launches tasks. The tasks is the unit of execution in, in Mesos. So what we can do is Mesos master doesn't do make any decisions about allocations. The framework does that. So opposed to, let's say, an operating systems kernel that would, where you say, give me X number of bytes, then you get it. Mesos work with an offer model. That'll be that the Mesos master offers the scheduler some resources and the Scheduler can then choose to accept by running some tasks on them or decline it to wait for something better coming up. Um, so that should be illustrated here. Like first off, you get resource offers. You choose to accept those. You launch tasks. The business master propagates that to the executor. <coughs> launch a task. The executor is responsible for letting the scheduler know that, that things went well. And this is another handwritten point. Um, because why do we talk about language bindings at all? So right now you can use C++. You can use all JVM languages, Clojure, Scala, <coughs> um, and Python to write um, frameworks in. And the simple fact is that Mesos internally has a uh, actor library that's called libprocess. Lib and it's simply to, to make Go, um, in, enable Go to, to communicate with, with the master, which goes through libprocess, which is a library in itself. So Go calls into C Go, which with a bunch of stuffs, C++ stuffs, calls into libmesos. That's all there is to it. And uh, I want to show you a, a, a small demo. Um, are there any questions so far? about what? Um, so I have a cluster running, I've cheated a bit. We created a tool that's called Elastic Mesos that helps you launch uh, Mesos clusters. So the only thing you do is that you click a cluster size, you type in your AWS, AWS credentials and a public key in your email, and then that will provision a cluster of that given size. But I already have that running, and I'm already logged in. <coughs> Can you see this text okay? I hope so.
So this is basically the structure of the Git repo for, uh, for Mesos Go. This is part of Protobuf. And this is the, the C code that uh, the binds it or links it to, uh, to Mesos. Um, but what you do is that you write a scheduler. Um, this is an executor being, being put, put together. One thing that's worth uh, mentioning is that um, Mesos uses protobufs or protocol buffers, which is a way to describe messages. So you, you put those together and you, and you register a driver. And basically, let's say, this is the entry point where you, you get a, an offer from a master. And for each of those offers, we create a task and we launch it. Executor that I'm about to run, I put that into a Hadoop, the Hadoop file system already. So all these slate nodes can, can pull that binary. And that is my current master <coughs> node that, that's, uh, that's active. And if we look at the, the web UI for a cluster, you can see I've run it a couple of times. This one just finished and has five tasks. And if all tasks should have run in a decent, decent way. Yeah, that's, uh, that's more or less what I have. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah? Yeah, um, let me go back to the slide. So on a term basis, the master would offer resources to, to frameworks. And um, you will get no other resources um, offered until you make a decision whether or not to accept a given resource or to, to decline it. A resource could look like there's a there's a box that has two CPUs available and 32 gigs of RAM, and you say that's enough to run my task. And actually, I only need half of it, and then you launch on half of it. algorithms that ensures balance across all, all the frameworks. So one framework cannot um, starve other frameworks, for example. So the master is not getting communication from you with regard to what you actually need. It just offers the biggest thing. Exactly. So all the logic sits in, the, in, the, in a scheduler. So that was, that was the, the kind of new thing, was that you, you did have big monolithic resource schedulers before, like Slurm. Um, but they became inherently com complicated piece of software to maintain. So here, you, put, you push that decision upwards. Cool, yeah? Can you distinguish uh, this process as a and what would be the barriers to pure go? We are working on it as we speak. Um, oh, there you are. Um, it's simply, so, with, within Mesos, um, all communication is over HTTP and protobuf serialized over HTTP. So it's simply the oddness of, of the internal HTTP server that, that prevents you from, from, from doing that. But we are working towards that. You just serialize a protobuf and you write it to, towards an HTTP endpoint. So, so yeah, we're working on that. But then you wouldn't need all the, the Seago nastiness that, that's in place right now. Oh.
Oh ja. Do you have a last question? Yes, you have to make a, make a guess about what you need. Um, there is definitely some work being done in, in um, ha have a clever ways to determine that. 